What's up guys, Max from Max Rips here, and today we will be doing an unboxing and review on this brand new MiG 250. Um, I got this off eBay, there's a lot of different variations of this from a variety of Chinese sellers. I'll post a link in the description to this specific unit, however, um, due to the titleless nature of YouTube, by the time you see this video, this link may or may not be active. However, if you go on eBay and search for MiG 250, uh, you should be able to find lots of these uh, variants. Um, now, I'm not associated with this. This is a no way product sponsored. I paid um, basically full pop retail for this. No communication with the seller. Um, and I bought this to replace my old Chinese $300 MiG. And for me, it was very important to get something with a true 250 amp uh, capacity because I periodically have to weld pretty heavy duty things. And the reality is, the heavier you do the welder, the better the components, the more power it produces, the better it's going to weld in a variety of situations. Um, so we got this thing, we're going to unbox it, take a look, and then I'll set it up on uh, my MIG cart uh, with a tank, and then we'll do some welding in and see how it welds. And uh, we'll probably finish this video up with a little uh, trailer repair project that I need to take care of um, that will kind of... Not really test out the MIG, but just kind of give you an idea of the sort of projects that I, I use my machine for. So with that being said, uh, let's get to unboxing. So we've got a user manual some braided line, um, this is for your gas supply. This is a 15 foot um, trigger lead, this uses a standard Euro connector on it. Um, I can use this or I can use my old one. Let's see, there should be... Um, we have a lift off TIG style torch. Um, this is just gonna go into the bucket of parts. Um, I have a TIG, we're not going to be testing out the uh, TIG functionality. Lift off TIG is kind of shitty and I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, we've got some uh, wire, one kilogram, 71T GS, I don't know if this is gas shielded probably, so that's like what's for. This is a very badly bent um, 120 to 240 adapter. So that's not very good packaging. Um, there's some goggles. Please do not ever weld in something like this. Um, there's a standard little brush. And that's it. Let's see. I was kind of expecting there to be a ground lead. So this comes pre-terminated for the uh, 120. So you got to use the 120 to 240 adapter out of the box, which really kind of makes me wish it wasn't fed to shit. And this is a 6-50P NEMA connector, which is pretty standard. see any damage. We've got a little protective cover here on the Euro connector. This is basically whether you're doing um, TIG or MIG. We've got a number of controls here. We'll cover this more in a moment. This is your uh, continuous current from MA. This is your spool, spool out. You have a wire speed, MIG voltage, and MIG back burn. And then you obviously have uh, a switch here to control. On the side, we've got a little door that's kind of bent in already. Ah. This is our um, uh, 
stick welding lead and a ground clamp. And these all use the little baby NEMA size um, threes or sixes or whatever they are. DKJ 1028, 1028s. Um, and in here we can fit our spool. There's basically just like a nut and a spring loaded tensioner. This is all fully adjustable. It's nice to see this is all cast. All the wiring looks good. We're actually not going to take this box apart. Um, but the next step is we're going to get it onto, um, onto the cart so we can do some actual welding. So we've got this loaded up in here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and test it out with their gun first. Uh, mine's a little longer, so I'm probably going to end up going to, uh, to use that later. But for now, we're going to test with what it came with. Um, as you can see here in the front, we have wire speed, which shows up here. And it runs from a 42 to a 250. Um, I don't know what that is other than a relative number. Um, for MIG, we have voltage that's displayed down here. And then you have this MIG burn back, um, which I'm not really sure how well that's going to adjust. For a MIG, you want this running into the positive side. This is um, my old ground cable. It's simply longer. Um, the one that came with it is fine. It's just a little bit shorter. Um, but the gun is actually pretty decent. Um, it feels pretty good in the hand. We have our bottle set up. We have gas ready. Um, I just need to go and grab some, uh, show you guys what it looks like from over here on the cart. I gotta go grab some uh, test material and then we can begin. Yeah, our first welding test, we just got a few pieces of scrap. This is probably 3 16 This is like, I don't know, probably 3 8 or whatever. And then we've got some exhaust tubing. And we're just gonna lay some beads down and kind of get a feel for what this looks like and see if I can't figure out um, what kind of specs I need to set the welder up on. So we're gonna start out right here. This is our kind of 3 8 heavy duty, just like a chunk of steel. Um, we're gonna set it probably to about 20 volts and 130 speed. So I don't know what that really correlates to, but let's just see what kind of beat this puts down. pretty good. Seems to be melting well. Hear that nice bacon sizzling sound. I'm going to turn down the speed to about a hundred and turn up the voltage to, we'll just go all the way up. That's this 24. Let's see if this will burn in. Yeah, you can hear that sound up wire speed. Go back up to 135. Sorry, there's a pain on the back side of this, but if we can see, I don't like this holder, this holder is already useful. Uh, that's paint on the back side burning off. This is an old um, piece of boat trailer. But you can see, that's leaving a pretty pretty nice little bead right there. I would feel pretty confident um, in terms of joining metal. So let's go to the opposite end, right? This is right here. We're going to turn this down to like 17 bolts and maybe 75 feet speed and see if it's going to burn through this exhaust pipe. Now 
man, that leaves a really nice looking bead. Now obviously we're not joining anything, we're just welding, but you can even see on the back side, got about the right amount of heat. And so, now, let's see if we can basically just... On dirty metal we're getting a nice very consistent puddle going all in all this looks really good now these are just dummy kind of bullshit tests um, you know anybody can just weld stuff like this we're going to uh, next use this on an actual project so here we are on the boat trailer as you can see this was bent and cracked pretty badly um, by me dragging that over something um, this is absolutely fixing the wrong thing the wrong way or doing the wrong thing the wrong way but all I'm really gonna do is I pulled it as tight as I could and then I'm gonna fish plate this giant plate over the top of it and we're basically just gonna burn it in with the welder to kind of help keep everything uh, marginally copacetic this isn't really a great welding project um, it's not really gonna showcase anything too genius but uh, you know it's what I got right now and so that's what we're gonna throw in the film Once I realized you had to turn the gas on, you get pretty good welds. Um, even though I'm kind of dirty steel right there, you can see that's with no gas. That's with gas. Very big difference. I don't know that I've done all that much to fix this, but I needed to weld something for this video to make sense, so I did. I'm definitely going to replace this with my own longer lead, um, just because it's longer, makes life easier. But uh, I'm going to pack up and then I'll give you guys some conclusions. Okay guys, I know that wasn't very much of a welding demonstration, but just putting, you know, less than an hour of work on this machine, I can already tell you for the same $300 that I paid for my old machine five years ago, this is a significant step up in terms of quality of weld, in terms of control. Also, this machine isn't going to live on the floor, it's going to live on this cart which will hopefully help expand its life. Um, <clears throat> the honest factor is, if you know what you're doing, this is just as good um, as a Miller. And, and you know, I can put my flame suit on, but I will buy one of these every five or six years when they fail. Um, and at that point I can reassess what kind of welding capabilities I need. I, if I need to do you know, pretty welds or fine welding, I have a TIG. The TIG works really well for that kind of uh, application. This thing works great for everything else. Um, I'm excited to build some stuff with it. It's just kind of a, a slow time right now. I don't have a ton going on in terms of metal fabrication. But overall, I'm very happy with this. Again, for about $300 landed in my door. Um, hopefully we can get five more years out of this like we got out of the last one. And it's nice to be able to weld you know, full 250 amp capacity um, you know, we welded some decent sized plate steel today and, and it just did it like a champ. As always, if you like the video, hit the like button. If you like the channel, please subscribe. Leave me a comment. Um, tell me why your Miller is better. Uh, tell me if you've got one of these uh, cheap MIG 250s. Let me know how it worked out for you. Um, 
I'll link the videos down below to the original year review five years ago or six years ago now, as well as the video about its death for the previous machine. And uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to build some cool stuff with this. And uh, just because just you don't spend a bunch of money on high-end welding equipment doesn't mean you can't make beautiful things. Um, if you guys check out my channel, check out my Instagram. Um, it's a pretty good example of that. So, I love you guys. Peace.